Seeds of Change by Jen Cullerton Johnson Illustrated by Sonia Lynn Sadler Come, Wangari's mother called. She beckoned her young daughter over to a tall tree with a wide, smooth trunk and a crown of green oval leaves. Feel, her mother whispered. Wangari spread her small hands over the tree's trunk. She smoothed her fingers over the rough bark. This is the Mugumo, her mother said. It is home to many. It feeds many, too. She snapped off a wild fig from a low branch and gave it to her daughter. Wangari ate the delicious fruit, just as geckos and elephants did. High in the tree, birds chirped in their nests. The branches bounced with jumping monkeys. Our people, the Kikuyu of Kenya, believe that our ancestors rest in the tree's shade, her mother explained. Wangari wrapped her arms around the trunk, as if hugging her great-grandmother's spirit. She promised never to cut down the tree. Ancestors Your ancestors are the people in your family who lived long ago. Each year, the Mugumo grew, and so did Wangari. As the oldest girl in her family, she had many chores. Every day she fetched water clear and sweet from the river. In the rainy season, she planted sweet potatoes, millet, and beans. When the sun shone brightly in the dry season, she shooed the chickens into the shade. Sometimes when her brother, Nduritu, returned from school, he and Wangari played among the arrowroot plants by the stream, where thousands of eggs hatched into tadpoles, and tadpoles turned into frogs. During those times, Nduritu told Wangari what he had learned in his classes. Plants give air for people to breathe, he said. Twenty divided by two is ten. There are seven great seas to sail. Wangari listened as still as a tree, but her mind swirled with curiosity like the currents in the stream. Even though she knew few Kikuyu girls who could read, Wangari dreamed of going to school and learning, just like her brother. I must go to school, she told him. You will, he promised. Nduritu talked to their parents. Why doesn't Wangari go to school, he asked. Swirled. If something swirled, it moved quickly around in circles. Currents. Currents are flowing movements of water in a lake, river, or ocean. Wangari's parents knew she was smart and a hard worker. Although it was unusual for a girl to be educated, they decided to send her to school. They knew she would not disappoint them. After some time to arrange for fees and supplies, Wangari's mother came to her. You are going to school, she told her daughter. Wangari grinned widely and hugged her mother. Thank you, she cried. I will make you proud. Wangari walked the long road to a one-room schoolhouse with walls made of mud, a floor of dirt, and a roof of tin. In time, she learned to copy her letters and trace numbers. Wangari's letters soon made words, and her words made sentences. She learned how numbers could be added and subtracted, multiplied, and divided. Animals and plants, she discovered, were like human beings in many ways. They needed air, water, and nourishment, too. When Wangari finished elementary school, she was eleven years old. Her mind was like a seed, rooted in rich soil, ready to grow. Wangari wanted to continue her education, but to do so, she would have to leave her village and move to the capital city of Nairobi. Wangari had never been farther than her valley's ridge. She was scared. Go, her mother said. She picked up a handful of earth and placed it gently into her daughter's hand. Where you go, we go. 
Wangari was sad to leave, but she knew that what her mother said was true. Wherever Wangari went, so went her family, her village, and her Kikuyu ways. She kissed her family and said goodbye to the Mugumo tree, remembering her promise always to protect it. Wangari's new life in the city amazed her. Skyscrapers towered above her head, not trees. People rushed through the streets like river water over stones. At school, she lived with other girls like her, all trying to weave their village customs with new city ones. At night when the girls slept, Wangari dreamed of home and the sweet figs of the Mugumo tree. Her dreams reminded her to honor her Kikuyu tradition of respecting all living things. Wangari was an excellent student, and science became her favorite subject. She especially loved studying living things. Air, she learned, was made from two molecules of oxygen bonded together. Bodies were made up of cells. Leaves changed color because of photosynthesis. As graduation neared, Wangari told her friends she wanted to become a biologist. Not many native women become scientists, they told her. I will, she said. Wangari would have to travel halfway around the world to the United States to study biology. She had never left Kenya and had little money. But with her teacher's help, she won a scholarship to a college in Kansas. America was very different from Kenya. In college, many of Wangari's science professors were women. From them, she learned that a woman could do anything she wanted to, even if it hadn't been done before. While Wangari discovered how molecules move under a microscope lens and how cells divide in petri dishes, she also found her strength as a woman scientist. After she graduated from college, Wangari traveled to Pennsylvania to continue her studies. Letters from home told Wangari about changes in Kenya. The people had elected a Kikuyu president, Jomo Kenyatta. Proud of her country and proud to be Kikuyu, Wangari decided to return home to Kenya to help her people. America had changed Wangari. She had discovered a spirit of possibility and freedom that she wanted to share with Kenyan women. She accepted a teaching job at the University of Nairobi. Not many women were professors then, and even fewer taught science. Wangari led the way for other women and girls. She worked for equal rights so that female scientists would be treated with the same respect as male scientists. Wangari watched sadly as her government sold more and more land to big foreign companies that cut down forests for timber and to clear land for coffee plantations. Native trees such as cedar and acacia vanished. Without trees, birds had no place to nest. Monkeys lost their swings. Tired mothers walked miles for firewood. When Wangari visited her village, she saw that the Kikuyu custom of not chopping down the Mugumo trees had been lost. No longer held in place by tree roots, the soil streamed into the rivers. The water that had been used to grow maize, bananas, and sweet potatoes turned to mud and dried up. Many families went hungry. Wangari could not bear to think of the land being destroyed. Now married and the mother of three children, she worried about what would happen to all the mothers and children who depended on the land. We must do something, Wangari said. Wangari had an idea as small as a seed, but as tall as a tree that reaches for the sky. Harabi! Let's work together! she said to her countrywomen, mothers like her. Wangari dug deep into the soil, a seedling by her side. We must plant trees. Many women listened. Many planted seedlings. Some men laughed and sneered. 
planting trees was women's work, they said. Others complained that Wangari was too outspoken, with too many opinions and too much education for a woman. Wangari refused to listen to those who criticized her. Sneered. If you sneered, you showed disapproval and lack of respect by the look on your face. Outspoken. If you are outspoken, you say what you think, even when others do not agree. Instead, she told them, Those trees you are cutting down today were not planted by you, but by those who came before. You must plant trees that will benefit the community to come, like a seedling with sun, good soil, and abundant rain. The roots of our future will bury themselves in the ground, and a canopy of hope will reach the sky. Wangari traveled to villages, towns, and cities with saplings and seeds, shovels and hoes. At each place she went, women planted rows of trees that looked like green belts across the land. Because of this, they started calling themselves the Green Belt Movement. We might not change the big world, but we can change the landscape of the forest, she said. One tree turned to ten. Ten to one hundred. One hundred to one million. All the way up to thirty million planted trees. Kenya grew green again. Birds nested in new trees. Monkeys swung on branches. Rivers filled with clean water. Wild figs grew heavy in mugumo branches. Canopy A canopy is a roof-like covering like the top branches of trees in a forest. Mothers fed their children maize, bananas, and sweet potatoes until they could eat no more. Wangari continued to fight for her cause, planting trees and helping village women. She traveled to many places to spread her message and to guide people to take care of the land. She earned the nickname Mama Miti, or Mother of Trees, in 2004, she won the Nobel Peace Prize for her environmental work and her dedication to women's rights. She continued planting trees until her death in 2011. Today, people all over the world remember her and continue her great work. Because of Wangari, those who carry on her work can envision a clean, safe environment for all. Envision if you envision something, you picture it in your mind.